Hello, my name is Ian Cyrus. I am a practitioner of acupuncture and oriental medicine. My office is based in Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. I just wanted to talk a little bit today about the whole concept of what enthesopathy is, what reciprocal inhibition is, a little bit about segmental facilitation or segmental treatment, what essentially are the deep paraspinal muscles and their role in a variety of different um, conditions. Okay, here we go. All right, let's start with enthesopathy, this uh, enthesopathy model. Here we have two bones, and between the two bones there is a muscle. The muscle is attached to the bones by tendons, and the point where the attachment occurs is the point of focus here. Now the muscle will shorten, and that's what these lines represent, due to a variety of causative uh, or etiological factors such as direct trauma to the muscle, or the bones for that matter, repetitive strain, chilling, like sitting under an air conditioning duct for an extended period of time, positioning, sleeping with your head in a bad position and then you get up in the morning and you have a stiff neck, that's shortening. Emotional stress can cause the muscle to shorten. And then there's nutritional deficiencies that can also cause this muscle to shorten. Once the muscle shortens, it pulls at its point of attachment, either at this end or at that end or both. And then you have a, mu you have a situation here where there's a muscle imbalance because it's, it's, it's reciprocal, which if imagine the bicep, it's, um, is the agonist and the tricep is the antagonist. When the bicep contracts, the, the uh, tricep lengthens. That's known as reciprocal inhibition. All right? But at the point of attachment, you will have irritation here and of course the inflammation um, pathway uh, ensues and then you have inflammation, you have degenerative conditions um, uh, here you have, uh, you know, excess calcium being laid down to strengthen that area. So a whole lot of problems uh, begin with this model. Now, if we move over to um, the the uh, spinal segments, the same thing happens at the level of of the spine. Here we have three segments: one, two, and three. And we have various muscles bridging the, these three segments. Usually they're evaluated in, 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 in threes, okay? So here we have the multifides, the semispinalis, the rotatories, the interspinous muscles, and what have you. Now, uh, we all, as oriental medicine practitioners, are familiar with the Huato GAG points. And the Huato GAG points really are, in my estimate, is where all of these muscles tend to, you know, cross or bisect. So that when you, you needle this, you have the same effect as though you would needle the shortened muscle that we just talked about over here, okay? So you put a needle in there, and what happens, it returns, you get a noticeable twitch response, or what's known as a LTR, or local twitch response, and that twitch response would only occur if there is a myofascial trigger point in the belly of that muscle, okay? So what happens at this point is that the muscle returns back to its resting length and then there is a restoration of the local physiology because once this thing shortens, you have a local energy crisis. Now, at this point, let's get back to over here. Um, you put a needle in this point and it returns the muscle back to its resting length. Now here is below that, there is a, uh, 
all right below that there is a you know three segments one two and three and on this side because of the causative factors that we discussed earlier the muscle shortens so let's just say this muscle shortens or that muscle shortens on the other side of the the spine you have a lengthening of related muscles okay so you have a muscle imbalance that's known as reciprocal inhibition again and that's the reason why you would have bulging this disc herniations uh, different forms of uh, stenosis arthritis impingement radiculopathy and what have you okay so uh, understanding this model is important in treating and the difference between agonist and antagonist muscle knowing the knowing really what it, this is reciprocal inhibition will go a long way to helping you achieve some clinical um, efficiency and results now uh, there is a, a also another concept known as um, uh, uh, facilitation that is if for instance you have a liver pathology that liver pathology will reflect at the level of the spinal segments let's say between T 18 90 10 and if you palpate that you'll find that that these segments become facilitated or stuck when you needle the Watto GAG points which is which is right here okay let's take a look at that right there the Watto GAG points it normalizes the the related organ so that's more of an acupuncture and oriental medicine theory but it also shows up in western medicine they understand the concept of facilitation okay so that's a diagnostic tool so if you have say some kind of lung problem you go to T Mm, two, three, three, T4, and you palpate those segments, and you will find that those segments are facilitated. You you treat the facilitated segments. You balance the organ function. Okay, so I hope uh, uh, what I've had to talk about here has been helpful. And feel free to give me a call or contact me at the Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine Center, located in Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. Our phone number is two one five. 277-7554. My website address is eastasianmed.com and uh, my personal email address is ian.cyrus at gmail.com. Thank you.